All right, let's get to the uh, let's get to some of the reads here for the week. Um, oh, here we go, live reads. Oh, look who it is, everybody! Look who it is. Policy genius. Uh, spring is springing as we speak. Is it? Is it me or is, is, is am I crazy? People back me up. Hey, this guy knows what he's talking. What I'm talking about. I know what you're thinking. Sorry, just had to get all those '80s setups out of my fucking brain here. Spring keeps happening earlier. Like we're, we're fucking moving the clocks forward in like March. That shit used to happen in April. It used to go from fucking October to April. Let me see something. Daylight savings time. Daylight savings. Date keeps moving up. Why is there daylight savings time? Why does daylight savings time keep changing? Let's see. Why is there daylight? It was not the farm thing. Daylight savings time in the United States is the practice of setting the clock forward by one hour when there is longer daylight during the day so that evenings have more daylight and mornings have less. The Uniform Time Act of 1966 established the system of uniform daylight savings throughout the United States. But why? Um, That's hilarious. Ohio clock in the U.S. Capitol building. They got like three of the oldest white, four of the oldest white guys ever. Um. Daylight savings time in the U.S. Why? Where is it? 1916 to 66, early consistent use during World War I in an effort to conserve fuel. Germany began to observe daylight savings time. The Germans, I'm telling you, man, they're not good with people. They're great with machines. On May 1st, 1916, the rest of Europe soon followed. The plan was not adopted in the United States until the Standard Act time of March 19th, 1918. So this came from Germany. Uh, which can once we can work longer, uh, which confirmed the existing standard time zone system and set uh, daylight savings time to begin on March 31st and reverting on October 27th. The idea was unpopular, especially with farmers. In fact, daylight savings times meant that they had less time in the morning to get their milk and harvest their crops to the market. Well, why did those fucking dopes just wake up earlier? Um, If they had the internet, they would have done it. Back then, they would be like, daylight savings time is a fucking conspiracy. Uh, Congress abolished daylight savings time after the war, overriding President Woodrow Wilson. Oh, yeah, the old Federal Reserve Act. Overriding President Woodrow Wilson's veto. Daylight savings time became a local option. New York City continued to observe a metropolitan daylight savings time while rural areas outside the city did not. So it started to conserve fuel. All right. Okay, but why does it keep moving up? Um, Why does daylight savings time keep moving up? The nominal reason for daylight savings time has been to save energy. Okay. More states moving to keep daylight savings time permanent. Oh, that blows. Why would you do that? I I like that in the fall when all of a sudden it gets dark out. The football games are dark. I like things to stay the way they were. Um, you know what's the amazing thing about getting older? Watching things change, and I'm coming to the end of me freaking out. Oh, the NBA is not the way it used to be. I'm coming to the end of all of this, and I'm kind of getting into the fact that no one cares what I think because I'm too old. <laughs> Advertisers don't care. All they want to do is sell me drugs to clean out my fucking prostate or... Uh, make my brain have less plaque or whatever. They don't give a fuck. I mean, and the thing about it is, is when people, when universally people stop giving a fuck about what you say, you can then say whatever you want. Yeah, your boobs are hanging out, you know? Oh, grandpa, like nobody cares. Can't be in your 20s and be like, hey, your boobs are hanging out. Cancel him. All right, policy genius. Spring is springing as we speak, and it's the perfect reminder to qu- quite literally get your house in order. Yeah, like Easter keeps moving up. I'm never going to get through this copy. Uh, why not get a head start? Like, why is Good Friday like always on a different fucking day? Like, do, do they have the date where they fucking whack this guy or what? Uh, Valentine's Day is always on the 14th, right? Uh, why not get a head start by revisiting your home and auto insurance with policy genius? 
They've saved reshoppers up to $1,055 per year on home and auto insurance. That's over $1,000 you could use on whatever home improvement project you've got. Oh, Jesus, this is written for me. You got your eye on. Here's how to get started. First, head to policygenius.com and answer a few quick questions about yourself and your property. Uh, the policy, then Policy Genius takes it from there. They compare rates from over uh, Americans, America's top insurers from Progressive to Allstate to find your lowest quotes. The Policy Genius team will look at all the ways to maximize your savings, including bundling your home and auto policies. If Policy Genius finds a better rate than what you're paying now, They'll switch you over for free. Um, that kind of service has earned Policy Genius a five star rating across over thousands of reviews on Trustpilot and Google. So while you're gearing up for spring cleaning, don't forget to dust off your home and auto insurance policies with Policy Genius. Reshop your rates and you could save up to $1,055. Head to policygenius.com to get started right now. Policy Genius, when it comes to insurance, it's nice to get it right. All right. Oh, look who it is. It's old Zip. You know, finding a great candidate to hire can be like trying to find a needle in a haystack. Isn't it time to fucking, you know, isn't it time to fucking update that thing? It's, it's like trying to find an all black cell phone, right? In a dark room. Uh, on a black leather couch. Oh, sorry, whatever. It needs work. Uh, sure, you can find, you can post your job to some job board, but then all you can do is hope the right person comes along. Yeah, who's in everybody's quarantine? Who the fuck's going to see it? Which is why you should try Zip for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash Burr. ZipRecruiter does the work for you. When you post a job on Zip, Recruiter, it gets sent out to over 100 job sites with one click. Then Zip, uh, matching tech, matching Zip Recruiter's matching technology finds people with the right skills and experience for your job, and Activity invites them to apply. You get qualified candidates fast. So, while other services may overwhelm you with applications to sift through, Zip Recruiter finds finds you what you're looking for the needle in the haystack all right the the the, the, the cell phone the dark colored cell phone in a poorly lit room sitting on a dark colored backpack damn it i can't come up with the analogy can you guys hey here's your homework for this week find a needle in a haystack i want to hear the up, updated version of that um in fact, ZipRecruiter is so effective that four to five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate through the site within the first day. I want to talk to that one who doesn't. Oh, my God, I found the best person. So did I. So did I. So did I. Jesus Christ, this fucking shit show came by. And right now, you can try ZipRecruiter for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash Burr. That's Zip. ZipRecruiter.com slash Burr. B-U-R-R. Just go to ZipRecruiter.com slash Burr. Zip. Recruiter. The smartest way to hire. All right, last one. Stamps.com, everybody. Oh, I like when they do it conversational. Let's face it, everybody. Taking trips to the post office is probably not how you want to spend your time. That's why I recommend mailing and shipping online at Stamps.com. Stamps.com allows you to mail and ship anytime, anywhere, right from your own computer. Send letters, ship packages, and pay a lot less with discounted rates from the United States Postal Service and the United Parcel Service, a.k.a. USPS and UPS, and more. Stamps.com has saved businesses thousands of dollars, thousands of hours, and tons of money. Stamps.com brings the services of the U.S. Postal Service and UPS right to your computer. Stamps.com is a must-have for any business, whether you, you're a small office sending out invoices, an online seller shipping out orders, or even a giant warehouse sending thousands of packages a day, um, Stamps.com can handle it all with ease. Simply use your computer to print out U.S. postage 24-7 for any letter. I got the hiccups. Ugh, any package, any class of mail, anywhere you want to send. How the fuck do you get the hiccups out, out of nowhere? I wasn't eating. Oh, there we go. Once your mail is ready, 
Just schedule a pickup or drop it off. It's that simple. With Stamps.com, you get discounts of up to 40% off post office rates and up to 62% off U.S. postal rates. Uh, Stamps.com is a no-brainer, saving you time and money. It's no wonder one million businesses already use Stamps.com. Stop wasting time. Go to go to the post. Stop wasting time going to the post office and go to Stamps.com instead. There's no risk. And with my promo code Burr B U R R, you get a special offer that includes a four-week trial plus free postage and a digital scale. No long-term commitments or contracts. Just go to Stamps.com. Click on the microphone at the top of the homepage and type in Burr. That's Stamps.com promo code. Stamps.com. Never go to the post office again. All right. Let's get into the questions here for the week, shall we? Shall we get to the questions for the week? All right. Cheers. Oh, I got a plug here. Uh, anything? Uh, there's a new episode of Anything Better. New episodes come out every Saturday morning. It's me shooting the shit with one of my favorite people in the world, uh, Paul Verzi. Paul Verzi is about ready to blow up as a fucking comedian, traveling comedian, if we can ever get past this fucking virus. I'm telling you, go see that guy live. He's been doing some, some scattered dates here and there uh, during this pandemic. All right. Cheers from Morocco. Dear Bill, thank you for all your podcasts, specials, and everything. Cheers from Morocco. Best regards. Look at that, Morocco. You played it for her, you can play it for me. Right? Isn't Casablanca in Morocco? Is it? Is it? Let me tell you that time I took my wife to go see uh, Casablanca because she had never seen it. So I take her to see it, and it's, uh, yeah, Casablanca, right? It is there. Okay. Um, So I take her to see this shit, and it turns out where we go to see it in downtown L.A., I thought it was going to be in this amazing movie theater. We showed up, and it was like the L.A. Symphony playing all the music live while you watch the movie. Okay? I fucking scored that day. That was the that was the greatest accidental accidental romantic thing I did. And the dumbest thing was I was like, I didn't know they were going to do this. So I lost all credit. All right, Dr. Strange Love country song. Hey Billy Mushroom Dick. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Hey man, uh on the podcast on March 1st, you mentioned that you watched Dr. Strange Love and proceeded to do the Peter Sellers voice from the movie. Uh, anyway, I was wondering if you heard of the song Okie from Muskogee. Yeah, by Merle Haggard. I have. The dude sings the entire song in the Dr. Strange Love voice, and I find it hilarious. Just a heads up, the singer does mention disapproval of recreational LSD use. Sorry if that triggers you. <laughs> that contradicts your truth, man. Ah, uh, you guys are fucking some funny sons of bitches, aren't you? Huh? Trying to take my job? All right, translation. Burrito gringo. Uh, all right. Hello, Billy Babushka balls. Longtime listener here. My name is Fernando. Now, how do you know Babushka? I thought Babushka was like Eastern European for like a fucking old lady. Your name's Fernando. Um, anyway, you asked... You asked, well, you asked any of your Mexican listeners to help you translate. I am a son of a bitch gringo breeder eater. I didn't say that. I said I'm a, I'm a burrito eating son of a bitch. Isn't that what it was? Um, anyway, now I, am Peru- now I am Peruvian, but I've been called a Mexican before. <laughs> to answer your question, that translates to yo soy. That means I am. Yo soy un, un hijo de puta. Puta. Work with enough Latin fucking comedians to know that that's uh, that's bitch, isn't it? Yo soy un hijo de puta gringo con burrito. Stay great and go fuck yourself. I wonder what happened if I said that in Mexico. They said, "Can I help you?" I said, "I am a fucking I'm a gringo I'm a fucking gringo burrito eating son of a bitch." Oh, this Peruvian guy. He said, "I am a son of a bitch gringo burrito eater." Yeah, I think you're doing the literal translation from your language. Like like in like French, they'll say the car yellow, where we say the yellow car, how it translates. I think you're doing it that way. I don't know. All right. Hope this is where to complain. Oh, boy. Here we go. Hey, huge fan. I'll cut to the chase. I'm in a pickle, but not really because I don't really give a fuck. Okay. This is a very zen way of looking at your problem. I like this guy or lady. Um, I own a home. 
in an in a Hoa community. What's a Hoa? H O A. A lot of prostitutes walking the block there. Sorry, I don't understand what I'm really paying Hoa for. All right, what the fuck is that shit? Is that something else I need to know? H O A. Meaning. Homeowner Association. A homeowner Association is an organization in a subdivision planned community. Oh, God. That sounds like a bunch of douchebags. You know, you buy a house and you still have to go to meetings. The fucking lady across the street can make you decisions on your gutters. Is that what's going on? You know, I don't know. Oh, Jesus Christ. I hate the sound of that. Anyways, I don't understand what I'm really paying HOA for. So I cuss them out in a mail letter. Our neighborhood isn't gated. Break-ins happen regularly, and we had a shooting not long ago. Yeah. And then there isn't much on their part that they do for us other than driving around. And from the comfort of their own car, they snap pics and send them in the mail with a fine. Oh, they fine you? So I spoke my mind in a colorful manner. Next thing I know, all the neighbors are looking at me like I'm a sex offender. The only thing that's bothering me about that is that the letter wasn't meant for any of them cunts and they shouldn't get their panties in a bunch. I'm just sick and tired of paying for shit that does nothing for me. So I should, so should I play ball and bow down or should I continue to not give a fuck? And if you tell me to give a fuck, uh, it'll be a long time till I do there, Billy. P.S. It makes me comfortable when I hear you say, let's get to the reads here. Thanks and go fuck yourself. Um, no, dude, I think you should just be yourself. The next time somebody gives you a look, just be like, what? Was it because of the fucking letter? There's a fucking robbery. Down. Just say what you just said. What are you paying for? That false sense of fucking security? Um, I stand by it. It's your fucking house. You're not in a gated community. What the fuck am I paying for? What happens if you stop paying for it? They can't take your house. Fuck them. That's a, that's a fucking crazy movie right there. And then you rebel, and then they, 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 they worry that they're going to lose the locker room. So then all the, everybody in the HOA plans how they're going to fucking kill you. Um, all right. Weird-ass fucking girl asks me out. All right. Hey, Bill, how you doing? Okay, so I'm currently working at Walmart as a cart pusher for about three weeks. God bless you. Um, I don't think I've ever met a cart pusher that works at Walmart. You always see him. See him all the time, but you ever know him? Do you ever take your time to talk to him? Oh my God, I can't, be, I can't imagine the fucking stories. You know what you should do after this job? You should become a fucking writer. I can't imagine what you've seen. All right, today there was a new girl who was working as a greeter. <laughs> Dude, Amazon has everybody shook. We got to make the store experience more, more exciting. I go to Amazon, but nobody says hi. Uh, she counts the people going in and greets them. Oh, so there's some big brother shit going on. All I did was introduce myself and talk with her a bit about my job. That's all. Yeah, but dude, you're pushing those carts, man. You're getting buff. She's, she's liking what she's seeing. All of a sudden, she asked me if she can go outside and hang out while I'm pushing carts. Out of nowhere, she asked me if I'm in love with someone else, asked me if I'm in love with her, Grabs my hand. Oh, boy. Oh, Jesus. Ask me if I can dance with her. Ask me if I can take her home and ask me if I wanted to go on a date tomorrow. Wait, in that order? What the fuck? Oh, boy. I think she's not mentally stable. No, I, I, think, I think you're right. I think you should trust your gut. She doesn't look that way, though. She's pretty and has colored eyes i bet she was a fucking huffer or something she breathed in a bunch of fucking gas or something like uh, that movie i saw with philip seymour hoffman called love liza uh she's about a seven or an eight i've never had this happen before so all i can think of this is that she's fucking crazy and wants to fuck my life up i would actually go on a date with her if she acted more normally what do you think trust your gut dude don't get don't get fucking enamored by the looks i'm currently a senior in high school and she's a sophomore jesus christ what run away 
I can write in later and update you if you want. Yes, dude, stay away from that. Stay the fuck away from that. Stay away. That is nuclear. Nuclear pussy. Stay away from that. Nuclear underage pussy. Stay away, says the Monday Morning Podcast. All right, girlfriend, because you're a senior, dude. You're going to be like 17. You're probably 17, eventually going to be 18. And then what? Hey, we can't bang anymore because now, now I'm of age and you aren't? Wait, what is, you know what? It's surprisingly the age of consent in most states is like fucking 16, if you can fucking believe that, which is insane to me. Dude, just stay away. Stay away. Um, lie if you have to. All right? Just, you know, and you got to go with a big lie with somebody crazy. Tell her you're gay. and Just say, listen, I kind of got the hots for the manager. All right? There's just something about him, you know? There's something about the fact that he doesn't have to wear this blue apron. It just makes, he's just hot to me. I don't know. Um, I don't know what to tell you, dude. Just, I would just stay away, okay? She hasn't come at you with an ax. Just tell her, I don't want to go out with you. All right, stand your ground. All right, and then you have to have defined boundaries. No more dancing outside. No more, no more, no more of that shit. You got you to cut the head off the snake. The good thing is, is this is early on in her uh, infatuation with you. And uh, is there anybody else at work that maybe you don't like? Just to have them walk by her. Maybe she'll fucking lock onto that person. It's like, she's like... The female, what about Bob? You have to get her out of your fucking world and into somebody else's. Um, but seriously, dude, I'm fucking around here. But if that, if that does escalate, uh, I'd say to go to management. But the way the narrative is out there is as a guy, you're just always wrong when it comes to women. So uh, I don't know. I would just always make sure there was a couple of shopping carts between me and her. That's what I would do. Um. Uh, yeah, just be like, I don't like being touched. I've been diagnosed as asexual. And my dream was always to push carts here at Walmart. So if you don't mind, I'm going to get back to living my dream. All right, girlfriend won't do housework. Quick background. Uh, been with my girlfriend for about three and a half years. Love her to death. My kids, 12 and 9, dig her too. We both work full time. I work a little more full time than her, but eh. Uh, long relationship. Loving relationship, sorry. Excellent communication. Supportive of each other's interests. Day-to-day, very warm and close relationship. But, he says, if she cleaned one goddamn thing around this house, I'd probably drop dead in shock. Aside from doing a load of laundry once in a while that won't get folded and put away unless I do it, I'm on my own here. I'm not some douche who thinks women's, it's the woman's job to keep the house clean. This is how guys, guys, you're literally apologizing to another guy. It's fucking, they got us all fucking scared shitless here. I do the dishes, vacuum, take out the garbage and recycling, scrub the toilets, et cetera, et cetera. Hey, buddy, I hear you. I just like it to be split up a little more or at all for that matter. I take a fucking 70, 30 split at this point. You know what's the worst is when you live with a slob and they actually do the dishes and then you, you pick them up and you have to do them anyway. That, it's, that's actually worse than them not fucking doing them at all. Anyway, I asked her, because they do such a shit job. I asked her if she'd clean one bathroom six weeks ago and nothing. So I'm just not using that bathroom and letting it sit until she cleans it. I politely asked her to get it taken care of a couple of times in that span but definitely not nagging her or making it a point of contention. How the hell do I get her to start cleaning? Thanks, best to you and the family, and go fuck yourself. Um, you said you guys have excellent communication, um, it, but for some reason you seem afraid to sit down with her. You're supportive of each other's interests. Just tell her, just say, listen, we're both working full time. I am exhausted. You are exhausted. We have to split up the housework. And here's the deal, dude. If you would accept 70-30... You got you to, gotta, in negotiation, you got to ask for 50-50. And that's not you being some fucking caveman. Um, it isn't. Women have fucking just gotten over on guys by just playing the victim all the time and making you feel like you're this fucking misogynistic person while they just completely, you know, do whatever the fuck they want to do. So, um a relationship is not a utopia for one person and hell for another person. That is not, that's not a functional relationship, all right? Both people take wins and losses. So, um, 
you know, and there's a million ways. Sit down, talk to her that way. And if she doesn't fucking do it, then I would do it myself. And then I just fucking, I would, I would just be upset with her. I just be like, listen, you don't respect me. This is ridiculous that like, I, I'm, you're, you're treating me like I'm your maid. I'm not just, you know, you got to stand your ground here. All right. Boyfriend hasn't told me he loves me. All right. Hey, Bill, long time lady fan and listener of the podcast. Love when the ladies write in. All right. I hope you and the lovely knee and your little ones are all safe and weathering the COVID storm. I mean, it's not even a storm anymore. It's just fucking is what it is. I'm a very private person and struggle to talk to friends and family about relationship issues. So I thought I would write into your, for your advice. Oh, wait a second. You're writing in for advice. What? It's time for advice. Hey, your host, Billy that's me. And I'm ripping off this melody from somebody else. All right. <clears throat> Not only did a female listener write in, but she set me up to play the only jingle I have on this. Oh, sorry. More music is playing. How do I shut it off? Okay. Um, okay. I'm very proud. Okay. Me and the boyfriend have been together for three years now, and not a day has gone by where I haven't felt blessed to have found him. He's caring, strong, hilarious, and we have a lovely balance in our relationship. The only thing that concerns me is he's never told me that he loves me. All right. Oh, he's one of the, he might be one of those guys where it's just like, well, I'm still fucking here, right? Doesn't that tell you something? The only thing uh, that concerns... Oh, I read that. Okay. To give you an idea of where we are at, he introduced me to his family, including his daughter, about a year... After about a year of us being together. Okay, this is getting weirder. We visit his mom every week, who is the kindest woman I have ever had the pleasure of meeting. That's another weird thing. If she was cold distance. All right, does he have a douche of a dad? I have met and get on well with all his friends. We have plans to buy a house within the next couple of years, and he always talks about our future together. My mom thinks he's the most wonderful man she has ever met, and everyone comments on how lovely our relationship is. I'm in my late 20s, and he's in his late 40s, but the age gap has never been an issue for us. All of his actions suggest to me that he does love me. He often calls me... His little love, oh, there it is, and uses the word in various contexts, but he has never outright said, I love you. But I have this old-fashioned notion that a woman should never be able to say, be the first to say it, which is probably ridiculous. That is ridiculous. You know, why can't you say what you're feeling? But I'm scared that he won't say it back. What do you think, Bill? Am I silly for expecting him to have told me he loves me at this point? Oh, my God, where is your self-esteem? You got to work on your self-esteem here and putting the emphasis on these three words. See, this is how much it, it bothers you that you've actually, you're trying to justify it, that it's, you're trying to like downplay it. Should I, should I bite the bullet and say it first or should I just give him more time? More time? You've been together for three years. You're talking about buying a house. Don't fuck up buy a house with, with this guy unless he says it. Or should I just give him more time and let him say it when he's ready? I truly feel that we were meant for each other, and I am extremely positive about our future together, but it is bothering me nonetheless. Thanks, Bill. Sorry for rambling. Look at you. Sorry for rambling. You didn't ramble. What you were doing was expressing how you feel. All right. If for some reason you've been made to feel, or this is how you're wired, that you saying how you feel is somehow a burden on people. You have needs, you need to acknowledge them. And you need to sit down with them and just say, listen, you know, I know you love me. I'm assuming it. We've been together for three years. You call me a little love and everything. But I just, I need to hear that from you. you I need to hear you say that you love me. All right? If it's something that you need, you know, I was almost going to say need a little time. You don't want to give it just, you can just ask him like, why? Okay. And then I, you know what? Something just take the pressure off. I need to hear that, but you haven't said it. And I'm not demanding that you say it. I'm just wondering why you haven't. Okay. Just go at it with like, you don't want to get into a fight. I just want to talk to you and just see what that does. All right. But like, you know, being in a relationship and feeling like that you can't talk to somebody. If I was you, I would also maybe if you got the time, maybe talk to a therapist, try to find a good one, ask around, 
and find out why you feel like you have to apologize for wanting to hear the person that you, you want to be with say that they love you. And also that you're saying, sorry for rambling, you know, um, you know, I, I would look at that stuff because, you know, you sound like a really good person and you should validate what you're feeling and in a relationship, just like that last guy, I need the woman I'm with to do half the, you know, do some of the housework. There's nothing wrong with that. And it doesn't make you a fucking caveman as a guy. And it doesn't make you a nag as a woman. You know, you just, you the last two people, what you're asking for is beyond reasonable. So that's it. You guys are beyond reasonable and I'm out of my fucking mind. That is the podcast for this Monday. Go fuck yourselves. Go Celtics. Go Bruins. Go fuck yourselves. And I'll check in on you on uh, Thursday. All right.